Number 35. The length of nylon rope from which a mountain climber is suspended has a force constant of 1.4 times 10 to the 4 newtons per meter. What is the frequency at which he bounces, given his mass plus the mass of his equipment are 90 kilograms? So basically what we have to do here is we have to find a relation, a uh, ship, right, between the force constant, the mass, and frequency. So the first thing is I realize I have force constant and mass, and they're talking about some bouncing. So I'll assume that it's simple harmonic motion. And if that's the assumption, which should be the case here, I can use the formula that tells us that the period of such harmonic motion shall equal then 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the mass that is oscillating divided by then this force constant. So simply I can solve for t, right? Just knowing these two pieces. So let's solve for the uh, period. I know you're saying, well, it's the frequency, but I know that I can find the frequency once I know the period, right? So let's just get that out of the way. The mass here was 90 kilograms. The force constant was 1.4 times 10 to the fourth. Let's plug that on into the calculator now. So it's simply going to be uh, 2 pi times the square root of 90 divided by 1.4 times 10 to the fourth. And we get a value of about 0 0.504 or so, right? And now to find the frequency, I know that the frequency is simply the inverse of the period. So all we have to simply now do is just plug this in, 1 over 0.504, and voila. This is simple. So just take the reciprocal now of that, and it works out to be about 1.9, I don't know, 9 or so? 1.99, and that's in terms of hertz. So that's the frequency. All right, not bad. Now let's take a look at part B. So part B. How much would this rope stretch to break the climber's fall if he free falls two meters before the rope runs out of slack? All right. So there's a little bit to letter B, and uh, it's kind of tough to depict a picture from what they're describing, but I believe this is the, uh, the case. So let's take a look over here. Here's the photo. Well, it's not a photo. It's a drawing. But anyway. Um, so... Here, there are three cases. This is the case where he has some slack. There's some slack in the string. Then what's going to happen is that he's going to free fall, okay? And when he free falls this distance of two meters, there is now no slack left in the string. It's also not stretched, though, at that point, okay? I know it doesn't, it, it, it's tough to kind of gain that insight from the problem, but I'm pretty sure this is what they're telling us. So it... He runs out of slack at this particular point. So he dropped down now two meters. All right. And once he can, you know, he's going to now run out of slack at this point. But you know that he's going to continue to fall even further because the nylon rope is going to stretch a little bit. Right. So now this will represent the fully stretched position. Okay. So I can understand a couple of things here. I know he's in free fall from, let's say, the point from the beginning to when it's uh, to when he runs out of slack. I know that that fall was two meters. And then I also know that once the st string runs out of slack, he's going to begin to stretch it right at this particular point, And then he's going to fall even further because the string is going to be stretched, right? The nylon rope, I should say, is going to be stretched. And that's going to stretch by a distance of X, we'll call it. You could have called it Y, you could call it whatever you want. But just don't call me late for dinner. That was stupid. Anyway, uh, so... Now, now what we're going to do is, um, I'm so sorry, I got distracted now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to, okay, so now we got to try to um, find, you know, we, we have to try to find this X here. Things are a little crazy. They give us a little hint here, right? They're saying use conservation of energy. So what the important point is that, and we've done a problem like this in the past in this chapter, that basically we consider, we can consider, and it also says, by the way, to ignore the energy the climber gains as the rope stretches. So what they're telling us there is that just assume that, you know, his total potential energy change and that there's not, you know, they're, they're, we're going to consider simple convergence here, that whatever potential he, energy he has at the initial point will all be converted all to potential spring energy in the final stage. Okay, so let's write that down. His potential energy due to gravity at the initial stage will be equal to his potential energy, his potential spring energy, or I should say the potential spring energy at the final stage. Now, there's only those two types of energies in the problem given the first stage and the second stage, okay? We'll assume that the ground is like here, you know, or here, whatever. So now what we realize is that I know two formulas, right, that 
I can expand upon these ideas. So potential energy due to gravity, that's equal to mgh, right? And that's going to equal then potential energy of the spring, and we know that that's going to be equal to one half kx squared. All right. Now here's the key to the problem. What is the total height that he's going to fall according to my picture? Well, the total height he's going to fall is not two. The total height he hold, to, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? The total height he's going to fall is going to be. I'm really off on this one, huh? Man. All right. I guess I, I guess I need to eat something. Uh, the total height uh, that he's going to fall is the two meters plus this amount that the string is going to stretch. Right, that should hopefully make sense, right? That's a total distance he's going to fall based upon my picture. So that means now I can kind of do this. I can kind of plug in mg, parenthesis then. The height now, I can simply say that it's going to be the 2 meters plus then that stretch length, right? Now that will equal now 1 half then times k x squared. Now in terms of plugging in signs and all this and all that, uh, for this problem, you might already see what's going to happen here. It's going to work out to be a quadratic. OK, basically what we can do is we can kind of ignore the signs. They're all going to cancel each other out and it really won't be a big deal. Um, so what we're going to do, and I can take the perspective of the ground here if I wanted. It doesn't really matter, um, but it's just going to be easier, I think, if we just plug in the values as we see them and then let the equation spit out what it's got to spit out. All right. So now doing some math here, we're going to distribute the mg. So we're going to get 2mg plus then uh, mg mgx will then be equal to one half kx squared. So notice this is a quadratic, right? Here is the squared term, okay? Here is the single term, right? Raised to the first power. And then here is the coefficient term. Oh, excuse me, that's coefficient constant term. All right, there is no variable there. So now what I want to do is organize this in such a way that uh, looks like a quadratic now, equal to, right, because we have to solve it. So we got to set it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract these two values on over to the right-hand side, basically, but I'm going to write it on the left. So there's going to be one-half kx squared minus then mgx minus then 2mg will all equal zero. Let's plug in what we know. I'm not, I'm going to plug it into my calculator. I'm going to tell you what it is. The k value is the force constant. That was the 1.4 times 10 to the 4. The mg here, right, the mass they told us was 90 kilograms, and you know what g is, and then this one we can also calculate. So let's just calculate it and then write down the full quadratic, all right? So 0 0.5 times then 1.4 times 10 to the fourth, and that's simply going to be 7,000 uh, x squared minus then 90 times 9.8, and that comes out to about 882, 882, and then x, that is, right, and then minus... 2 times that value, which is 1764. 1764 is all going to be equal to, is all going to be equal to now 0. So now here you go, right? So now we can basically solve this. How are we going to do it? Well, I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm probably not going to go through all the math because um, it's just, I, who wants to do that, right? I'm going to set you up and then you guys can calculate. So this is your A value. This will be your B value right here. And this will be your C value. Okay. So here is the, the formula you need. I'll write it on the upper left. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay. Plug it in. You're going to get two answers. All right. Or if you have a little program in your TI, if you have a TI, 80-something, uh, then you can just simply, play. that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm just going to simply plug it in. I'm going to get two answers. Let's see what we get. So A is going to be 7,000. B is negative 882. And then C is going to be negative 1764. And what do we get? So we get two answers, right? Ignore the negative. It doesn't have any meaning. Um, the positive answer is what we're going to take. And if you notice, what do we get? We get point, what is this? Five, six, eight, nine or so? Five, six, so I guess nine. We'll round. All right, this is in terms of meters. So this is the X value, okay? So now what we have is when we do that, right? When we do this now, you can convert this into centimeters. Actually, I'm just going to leave it, right? Why convert it into centimeters? That's the answer. You don't even need center. You can do meters. You can do centimeters. You can do 
kilometers, doesn't matter. They're all the same. Uh, you could do millimeters. I don't think I need to keep going right on that. Okay. So um, this is basically the answer. Now notice that this is positive, right? So the way I framed the equation here, I have a positive two, and then I'm going to add now a positive value to it. Now that makes sense based upon my picture here, right? Shouldn't I be taking, if I want to find the total height, didn't we say that it has to be two, and then we're going to add to that the x value? So if you were to plug in the negative answer, which was what, like negative 0.44 or something, if you were to plug that into this equa you know, this equation here, it would be two minus then x, but that doesn't make sense based on my picture. So that's another way to kind of view it, all right? In any case, guys, hopefully this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.